God bless you. Good morning and bless you in the name of our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Well, today will turn out to be a fascinating day simply because of the Bible truth. It's really like none other. As we've now held on this discourse for a while, it is because it is truly the foundation of the entire Bible. The understanding of Jubilee is a message that has not only not been understood, it's not really been declared. Uh, for some reason or another, even the translators of virtually 99% of the Bible translations in all of the different languages, when it comes to the Jubilee in Joshua chapter 6, they mistranslate the word into ram's horns or trumpet or some sort of sounding device but they don't translate it that it is the sound of the jubilee meanwhile that is absolutely no no linguistic expert would ever say it means anything other than that but the the understanding is so profound it is so legitimately beyond human understanding because god's ways he declares are not ours and when we hear paul say the preaching of the gospel is the power of God in Romans 1. That the power of God to us that believe is the gospel in 1 Corinthians 1. That over and over again, the thunder of the universe, God's voice, is the gospel. So misunderstood that we, in so many areas, think it's God getting angry because we sin. But yet, he came to take care of the issue of sin, and did so. The Jubilee is, that, like a good father or mother, seeing their child suffer or be hurt, inflicted pain, some level of suffering, a good parent will do everything they can to alleviate the suffering. No one wouldn't do, would do anything otherwise. And the Jubilee is a good parent, a perfect parent, the creator of all creation seeing his beloved creation, the pinnacle, the height of what he made. And to see them self-destruct, self-inflict, make silly, ridiculous decisions, commit sins that are harmful to themselves and one another. And the propensity to do so is forever present. Well, he finally said, enough is enough. I can't bear to see the love of my life distance from me, hurt. And he did something about it. When he came, he came with the announcement of Isaiah 61. You should read that chapter because it's an explanation of what Jesus said that morning, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. In other words, here I am, I have now come. Enough is enough of your suffering. I've come to take the problem away your nature, this inclination to sin and rebel. I've come to resolve all those issues. And he pronounces that he is the Jubilee. A moment, <laughs> certainly we, we don't feel the impact today, sadly. But in Joshua chapter 6, that famous Joshua chapter, where the onset of taking their possessions, it begins. There it is. They've waited for hundreds and hundreds of years, literally thousands if you go back to the beginning. And here they are on the very edge of finally accelerating forward, finally to possess their possessions, finally to get what God had earmarked for them since the beginning of time. They're there, poised. What a wonderful moment. And they have to follow a set of instructions. Those instructions are and they're very precise. They are rules of engagement. And the instructions are as follows. You're to take the priests and the nation is to encircle the city, the wall of Jericho. And no one is supposed to speak. Complete silence. The priests are to sound the jubilee trumpet and then go back home. Can you imagine? No one knew the instructions other than Joshua. And yet the nation obeyed because God had said the way they obeyed Moses they're gonna obey you I'm gonna give them the grace to do so and they did 
Imagine after one day too in blistering heat, millions of people saying, what is this about? If they were to talk, what would they have said? Are we crazy? Is he some sort of nut? Why are we following this idiot? They had 40 years of that. What do you think would stop them? All they ever did was complain and murmur and judge and criticize and think that they knew what was going on. But silence. You're not allowed to say one word again because of what they would have said, what they had been saying for 45 years. <laughs> That's a long time you're going to complain. Again, day two, nothing. Day three, complete failure. We'll study that in depth next week as we're going to take our walk around the walls of Jericho next week. But in preparation to understand this doctrine, this Bible truth, this bedrock of Jubilee, the instructions are blow the horn of Jubilee. Blow the gospel, the good news, because that is the Jubilee. And articulate, because as I said, the gospel is the power of God. The reason so many people don't see the power in their life is because whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not, whether we think we understand or not, truth is truth, gravity is gravity, whether, whether I agree with it or not. And the fact is, is that every single born-again Christian has an assignment from God to preach the gospel and be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, to lay hands on the sick and recover those that are feeble and weaker than you are. Every single person has a call on their life every single one you're not exempt we taught briefly on the parable of the talents and the fellow who kept the talent didn't steal it from God didn't misuse it didn't self-appropriate it acknowledge this belongs to you take it back he had no guilt he didn't do, do anything wrong so why am I a wicked and lazy servant sent to outer darkness hell <laughs> because you didn't do anything with what I gave you his sin was inactivity. His sin was, God created me. God gave me life. He didn't have to. It comes with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. And he requires something of me. He has the right. And that requirement is, after I save you, you better get your fanny and gear and save everybody else you come into contact with. And I go, nah, I'm too busy. I'm too busy enjoying my wonderful job that gives me good income. I'm too busy enjoying my wonderful wife or husband and children. I'm too busy enjoying my soccer or football or tennis. I'm too busy driving to Connecticut in the blue sky. I'm too busy. I got to get online on Black Friday, whatever that is, to save 50 bucks off an old TV from last year anyway. I'm too busy. <laughs> we don't have the right, ladies and gentlemen. What? What possesses you that we think we have that alternative? We don't. So therefore, when we don't blow the trumpet, there is no power because the power is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power is we give jubilee to men and women that are hurting and broken. What would have happened here? You all know the story. They blew the trumpet, shouted, the walls came down. We'll study that next week. But what would happen if they didn't blow the trumpet? The walls never would have come down. Well, this is the story of the Bible on how to progress to your cities, to your destinies, to the businesses and prosperity that God has for us the way a good father would. I have my children. Let's see. I want them to be bums, homeless, no money, sick, infirm, no education, no success, nothing. I want that for my children. Of course not. I want the best schools, the best success, the best of everything. They're my babies. I love them. So what do you think God has? What do you want for your kids? God, we're his children. But there are a set of rules. You must blow the trumpet. You must keep silent and stop being negative with your mouth. Because what you speak today is what will happen tomorrow. As a man thinks, so is he. And then you are... A scripture there, everybody, my God, the misinterpretation here, God forgive me. When they say, and there's one special requirement after the trumpet, all the gold, all the silver, all the iron, all the bronze, you must not touch. Those are the first fruits. They must come into the house of God. Right away, money. Of course we're supposed to tithe, but this isn't about money. This is about 
what those medals represent. And that's why we cannot read the Bible one chapter at a time. Because the chapters, according to Peter, the Bible interprets itself. And no scripture is an individual in itself. So you have to continue reading. And chapter 6 is interpreted by chapter 7. Because those medals represent nations, according to Daniel. Those medals represent what's valuable. And he says, bring those medals into my treasury. The most valuable thing to God are his people, his children that he wants saved. And he said, there are requirements here. The trumpet, preach the gospel. Be silent and stop criticizing and judging. Because by the senses, if you're going to go by appearance, those walls are never coming down. A bunch of nomads, tribal people with no weapons, living in a desert, just ferreting for food and eating manna, just doing nothing other than worshiping God. They don't have businesses. They don't even have arms. They had no iron. They didn't have the swords. They had nothing. But they're going to take down Jericho. 300 foot high walls, 80 to 100 feet wide. Oh, sure, you're going to take down Jericho. They, with what? what? That was a monument that they could not do it in their strength. And that's what the gospel is. God is telling us in this first story, you're striving and killing yourself for what you want. Meanwhile, according to Matthew chapter 6, seek me first. I want to give it to you more than you want it. I'm a good father. Trust me and do what I say. So be silent and preach. But then, huh, don't you dare appropriate those medals for yourself. Don't you dare substitute coins. Coins for people. No, you bring what's valuable to me into my treasury. Bring me my people. Save my people. So, as we'll study next week, we all know the story, but there's wonderful significance in it. But next week, the walls, the encumbrances, the impossible come down. Faced with a difficulty you think you can't manage, that's exactly where God wants you. Try it. at a Red Sea, I can't cross. Why would God send them that way? Because he wants you there so he can open up the sea and show you his glory and bless you bigger than you ever dreamed. Why do you come to the Jordan? How am I going to cross the rapids? Why, did, why am I here? Because I want you there so I can show you how large I am. And then you'll have faith and I can give you everything. What you think was impossible is exactly what God wanted you to see. It is impossible. But now watch me do it for you and you'll see how much I love you. Why does a parent give the kid the bicycle Christmas morning as a surprise? Why doesn't he just tell him everything? Oh, don't worry about the bike. We're going to go to J.C. Penney's and buy it. Don't worry about the suit. Let's go. We're going to go buy it. Why does the parent say, no, 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 no. I want to shock your pants off. Why? Because that moment is special. And then the baby says, oh, Mommy, Daddy, wow, they're amazing. They're... That's why God's the same way. I'm going to shock your pants off. You're going to see how amazing I am. Just give me an opportunity. Go by the rules of engagement. Blow the gospel. My God. My, stop being... Can I be frank? Stop being ashamed of your Jesus. Be bold with him. Tell somebody Jesus loves you. If they call you a coop, good. Rejoice. You've been persecuted for righteousness sake. Here come the blessings. And then stop, please. I beg you. Stop speaking. All, all inequity is bound in the tongue. Control that. Better say nothing. Please, and even if you think it, say, God, as a man thinks, let me think on Philippians 4, things that are beautiful and positive. And then, the treasure, the real treasure of God, his value, bring it into the treasury. So the walls come down. We'll study Rahab. That's next week, as I keep saying. They have everything, they plunder, and they bring everything to the storehouse. Except... There's a problem. They then go on now to their prosperity. They're entitled to it. God wanted them to take nation after nation after nation. God wanted them to take all of the beasts, the plunder, the jewels from here on in. You brought it into the storehouse. Now I'm going to give you everything. 
It really is amazing when you read this. God had, God has this thing about making people, you, you're going to criticize this, I suppose, about making people incredibly wealthy and rich in every area of their lives, including the monetary aspect. Just study David, study Abraham, study them all, Solomon, my God, the richest people on earth. Why? Because he's a wonderful father. But there are rules of engagement. So this fella decides to take something, and nobody knows it. He decided to take gold, a Babylonian garment, and hide things in his tent. Nobody knows it. They go to fight to the next city, and they're wiped out. And meet this tiny little city starts killing them left and right. Joshua is in extreme distress, and rightly so. When you read it, this man is in anguish because he is shocked the way Christians should be today. He is astonished that the power is gone. It's a moment that we all should have. We should be astonished in distress if we don't see the power in our lives. Well, it absolutely brought him to his knees. He was under duress like you see a few times in the Bible. Why? Where's the power? And God immediately answers, hey, the whole nation is going to suffer. You're done. The parade is stopped. The power is gone. The prosperity vanished. Why? Because someone defiled what I told them to do. Someone took out of my treasury. Someone had the unmitigated gall, the nerve, knowing the instructions to preach the gospel, knowing the Great Commission, knowing lay hands on the sick, preach, speak of me. They don't. They figure, I don't have to. I'll do what I want. I'll get a better idea because that guy preaching, he's a fanatic and I don't want to be a fanatic like him. Who the heck does he think he is telling me I got to preach the gospel and make disciples? I'm not going to do it. Okay. Okay. You should study Joshua 6 and 7 and Haggai and Malachi. Read it. The chapters are about this big. It takes you 20 minutes to read all. And then God says, because someone decided to disvalue my treasure, someone decided that they were going to take it for themselves, that the life that I give them and the air that I allow them to breathe, the lungs that I keep healthy, the heart I keep beating, they're just going to ignore me. Well, the nation is stopped success is immediately brought to a halt, and they wonder why God tells them God says there's sin in the camp look at the sin define the sin the sin was that he took from the treasury of God souls that you could be a friend with your neighbor every day in work work alongside the assembly line or the school every day and you're a Christian you've been saved your children are protected Here's the sick, he's in danger of getting fired, he's got arthritis, he's scared stiff, and you just shh. God says, how dare you? And the success stopped. He didn't blow the trumpet of jubilee. He disregarded the true treasures of God. He probably, in addition to that, spoke when he shouldn't have. So now, God says there's sin in the camp, someone took, and they stopped. First they called the tribes. Can you imagine this guy feels while this assembly and parade is taking place? Bring the tribes! And he's sitting there, oh, man. Pick the tribe! And they pick Judah. Goes, oh, my God. This takes hours assembling this many people. And he's sitting there knowing, oh, my God. Pick the family! And they pick a family of Judah. Pick within the family! And they pick him, his mother parents, his family. And he goes, who took? And jo they pick, now name them. And they do. Joshua says, tell the truth. And he did. I stole. I took from the treasure. Where is it? It's hidden in my tent. Joshua immediately, go, go get it. The answer was, go get that gold out of that. Not stay there. Run and get that gold before more people stop dying. They ran to the tent, tuck it up under the ground, brought it immediately to Joshua. 
and the plague, the problem is stayed. They had to go to the tent and resolve the issue. Go get the people. Just like Haggai. The book of Haggai is extraordinary. It literally, literally takes three to four minutes to read. If that, probably two. If you're a fast reader, one. It's about this big, the entire book. Two pages at most. And it has a thundering teaching. And God questions them repeatedly. Why do you have holes in your pockets? Why did your business fail? Why, when you thought you had enough money to pay the bills, you didn't? Why did the transmission break just when you saved up a little bit of money? You got to spend three grand. Why? Why does this happen to me? Why didn't I get the promotion? Why didn't I buy that stock? Why did I buy the wrong stock? Why did I lend money to that guy? Why am I stuck with credit card bills and debts and loans? Why? God says, very simple. You think it's the economy? Have a little bit more sense than that. You think it's your bad luck? There's no such thing. Think a little higher. Oh, it's the devil. It's my enemy. He don't have the power to give you a stuffy nose. It ain't the devil. So what is it? And God answers, it's me. Me? Yeah. Why, why would you do this to me? Because all your plans are about yourself. You want to build, which is good. You want to get a new car, fine. You want to be educated and be successful. I gave you that desire. You want to achieve, you want to feel you know, good about yourself. You want to provide for your wife and children. I gave you that desire. But in the proper context, that's not to leaving me, you know, an hour a week and it's a hassle. No, no. Seek me first. And how, how do I seek you? You know what he tells them? Read it right there. Go to the mountain and get wood. What is it? Come on. Like God wants you to go to the mountain and get wood. Like he needs us. He's got the, the Amazon forest. He doesn't need us to get wood. How in heaven's name do we get wood? Wood represents and trees people in the Bible. It's the same teaching cover to cover that God came to save the world, to save us from our sins, to jubilee us. So go jubilee somebody else. Go bring and get somebody to church and bring them and build my house. And I'll give you every, I'll give you a business so big you won't know what to do with it. I'll bless you so much you won't know how to handle it. I'll give you more than you can ask, think, or receive. I will give you so much. The windows of heaven, you won't be able to keep it. You'll have to give some away. That's what I want to do. And we think that's just a tall story. We don't understand Joshua 6 and 7. The solution was immediately, go get that gold. Get it and bring it to the feet of Joshua, the church. Immediately, bring that gold, the treasure, to Jesus' treasure. Bring that sick little old lady who will turn into a monster apostle if someone would give her the chance. Bring that guy who's full of sin and he thinks he's, you know, casting over and do, visiting the bars. I met a guy the other day and I'm trying to talk to him about God and he tells me, no, man, no, man, I, you know, I, I call and get a woman and we go out to dinner. I, he thinks he's like, I don't know, Tom Jones or, you know, I don't know who he thinks he is. That's dated. Maybe you don't, who, give me a modern day hunk. Who's the hunk? Tom Brady. That's the best hunk in the entire world. I have, a, I have a crush on Tom Brady. I admit it. No, no, no. Tom Cruise. There we go, right? That's a good one. Brad Pitt, right? He thinks he's all these guys combined. And I, I want to tell him, oh, God, you're not. <laughs> Jesus, Lord, are you in delusion? But that's their life. They don't realize that the treasure are his people. The jubilee is to sound the horn. And then... God comes on the presence. He told them, take the Ark of the Covenant and walk around the city quietly and blow that trumpet. Just hear the trumpet, nothing else. Hear the call of the Jubilee for you and for others. Hear it. And then the Ark goes with them. When you blow the trumpet, someone is going with you. The moment you articulate the name of Jesus to someone else, Father is saying to the heavenly host, she, he, they're not ashamed of me. They're not. They're proud of their God. 
look, 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 they're talking about me. And then God comes on the scene, the ark immediately comes where you are, and you are walking through life with the presence of God in your life. Are you kidding me? He'll tell you, this is the way, walk ye in it. You'll hear a voice behind you. Don't go that way, go this way. You'll be heavenly guided, divinely led. You will know exactly what to do. You won't be in flux. Do I go to this college, start this business? You'll know that you know, I need no man to advise me. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. I know exactly what I have to do tomorrow. That's the realm that Christians need to walk in, ladies and gentlemen. That's the realm, the realm of Jubilee. The realm that begins it all, that's the realm. The realm that brings the supernatural on the scene. But I repeat, there are rules. Blow the trumpet. Can you imagine, as I said before, the Bible interpreters couldn't bring themselves to think God will allow us to blow the trumpet of Jubilee? Can't be. That's just a ram's horn. That, that's just, that's just a, a trumpet, a horn. No, 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 cannot mean that. Oh, yes, it does. So don't be fooled any longer, ladies and gentlemen. This is an amazing God. Amazing more than anything you're ever going to imagine. Ho hoping, wishing, on your side, interceding. Blow the trumpet. Blow that trumpet. Now, he could have blown that trumpet on the first day. Why seven? He could have immediately said, blow it once and we're done. Try to see the teaching there. They blew it, nothing happened. They blew it, nothing happened. Continuously. Six days. Absolutely zero. God is sending us a message. You start preaching, I just want you to keep it up a little bit. Don't be discouraged when nothing happens. You think nothing's happening? I am orchestrating this to be the greatest day of your life. The weak will say, I am strong. You will declare, this is the best day of my life. Just keep blowing. Keep preaching. Stay silent, and you'll see. You think you failed in the past. I'm setting you up for the biggest success you're ever going to imagine. Just keep preaching, even though you don't see it, even though you don't know it. Just been there. Go there.